What you doing? What you doing? Go get your drink. <laughs> Come have a sip with me. Go get your drink. Yeah, this this a little wine. So, but you can have water or whatever, honey. Get your drink of choice, honey, and come on back and sit down with me. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, did you just happen to stumble up on me? It's okay. You can still be a part of my family. All you need to do is click the subscribe button to become a ray of sunshine. And since you're there already, do me a favor, click the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. For all of you that can do a hundred in the shade, honey, on cruise control with your eyes closed, but have chosen to stand in the sun and live in truth with me, what's up, what's up, what's up? You know I am so grateful to and for you. So we trying something new. We trying something new. Y'all tell me what you think about it. I'm trying to hurry up and capitalize on this good natural light I got coming in so I sure hope you can see me. Ooh, y'all can see my little small mini bar back there, but don't pay it no attention. Maybe I need to blur it out because it's you under 21. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so I live in my truth and I can appreciate someone who lives in their truth too. So shout out to Tyler, the creator, Kudos for you for living in your truth, standing in that sun and letting the light just shine right up on you because you are truthful. See, word on the street was that Tyler was a homophobe. And you know the one thing you don't want to be is on the bad side of the LGBTQ community, honey. That is one force to be reckoned with. If you've never seen a group band together in this day and age, check them out. They will come for you if you come for one of them or their own. And I'm so for that type of camaraderie, encouragement, and support. Well, Tyler wanted to make sure that that myth was debunked. He is not a homophobe. He is not homophobic. He does not have a fear of people who like other people of the same sex. No, no, no. He wanted it to be so clear that he let it be known on the wave of Coop's Tunes radio show, that's a mouthful, that he actually had a boyfriend when he was 15. Now you see, there was speculation already that maybe he might go both ways or he might like men, but honey, he just let it be known. I did, I've experienced it, that's what I did. It's also said that if you pay attention to his new album, Flower Boy, you can hear where he talks about kissing white boys. So, I mean, if that's not living in your truth, I don't, I don't know what is. I can appreciate the honesty of it all. You know what I'm saying? I can appreciate you being what you are. You straight, you be straight. You gay, you be gay. You bisexual, you, bi you be bisexual. I just don't like people that are dishonest. I don't like people who are afraid of their past. I don't like people who actually may jeopardize my life by being on the down low, which is something that happens all the time to women. And sometimes I'm always like, how didn't you know? How didn't you know? How didn't you know? Anyway, y'all know what I'm trying to say, but I can't stand the dishonesty of it all. So anybody that can live in who they are and not be afraid of it, high five. Yes, indeed. Sometimes you just gotta go ahead and let the people know I am what I am. Now here's a caveat. They do say that he backtracked just a tad bit on what he said, tried to clarify it, clean it up a little bit. I guess he didn't want people to really know what it was he liked. So then I'm all like, you're teeter-tottering. Stick to it. It's okay to be you. You'll be surprised how much support you get. Don't be afraid because people are not going to like you anyway. It may not even be because you gay or you like me and or you've had an experience or two. It might just be because, you know, you... you you smile too much. Your flow is too good. You used to live in Hawthorne. Like, it might be a whole flurry of things. So just live in who you are, and people that love you will love you regardless. You feel me? And I mean that for everybody in every situation. You can check that whole article out on theshaveroom.com. I love it. I'm a roommate here. Um, so yeah, let's keep talking. <laughs> I'm actually filling my drink. I've been trying to film this video all day as I drank all day mm -hmm. I, I filled it up before we started so yeah Robin Thicke y'all I love me some Robin Thicke I do that is one fine ass man 
I will go ahead and cross the bridge, then burn the motherfucker so can't nobody come behind me, swim across the ocean to get some of that. Do you hear me, honey? Paula Patton had it good. Well, evidently not so good. Y'all remember that whole messy situation when she wanted to file, well, when she filed for divorce in 2014 and how he made that album because he was begging for her to come back. Now, we know that that was 2014. We live in, we're in 2017, 15, 16, 17. That has been three years since all of that has occurred. They are not yet fully divorced, okay? So I think they're still going through the process. And you guys know if you've ever had a friend or if yourself has been divorced, if you guys have some type of assets plus children, it, it takes a little time. Uh, if you don't, it could take only six months and you'd be like, peace, I'm out. <laughs> Nevertheless, well, the word on the street is that Robin and his 22-year-old girlfriend, Amber Geary, are expecting their first child. They have been in a relationship for three years. Count them, one, two, three. I did say that the divorce started 2014, one, two, three. You do the math. Now, there are a couple issues here that people could cite. Number one being... Robin, you're not divorced yet and you're already having another baby. Wouldn't that still be considered adultery? Aren't you guys have, do, committing adultery, uh, exhibiting adulterous behavior because it would, be, blah, it would still be considered adultery? Yes or no? What do you think? In addition, the way my mind is set up. See, I didn't even go to the adultery thing, but that's what the buzz is. But here's how my, my mind set up. My nigga. <laughs> You been dating her for three years and she's pregnant. I get that men can hop out of one relationship and go into another one and get all into it. I, I get that. But the way my mind is set up, I'm going, was you fucking her while we were married, while we were still a family unit, while we were still working and operating in togetherness, while we lived in the same household with our children? Were you digging her guts out, Robin? Like, that's where my mind instantly goes. It does not go anywhere else. I'm sorry, not sorry. That's just the way I operate. And though Paula says that infidelity isn't the reason that they're getting the divorce, it's many contributing factors, I guarantee you that infidelity was one of them, that that eye was wandering. Honey, he is too fine. Them women was throwing them panties and pussy at them, them two peas left and right. I'm sure he caught a couple of them. The second thing I think about, I remember being in a, I don't know, it wasn't even a relationship, but I was dating someone that was 10 years my junior. He was 26, okay, it might be 11 years, because he was 26, I was like 39. Yeah, he was 26, I was 39. Yeah, and um, I liked him, he was cute, he was cool, but he, did, he lacked life experience. Now, y'all keep in mind, women, of course, are a lot more mature than men, and he wasn't immature, we just didn't have a lot of things in common. I mean, we might have liked the same food and liked the same movies, but when it got down to the grit of it, he couldn't support me in the things that I needed mentally and emotionally because he hadn't yet experienced it. There wasn't a way that he knew how to deal with certain things. So, and there were certain conversations that he couldn't have. We couldn't be in a say, I had never taken him where my friends were, but we probably couldn't be in a room with my friends and we have our grown up conversations and he not say something that doesn't make no sense where all of them head, whole head swivels around like, uh, uh -oh. their whole head swivels, swivels around like the exorcist because it says some out the side of his neck. So granted, I think to myself, how much does she have to offer him? I'm not saying that she doesn't have something to offer her. She's beautiful. She is. They're having a baby. Yes. And it's easy for a woman to provide support. That's how we do. We, by nature, we are supportive, supporting. That's what we do. Um, she's 22, so I'm sure she's got a little freak in her. She's probably a little nasty and can carry that in the bedroom. She might even know how to cook because, you know, when I was 22, honey, you don't get all this goodness from not knowing how to feed yourself and make it delicious and be good for their stomach while you're giving them everything else good. But when it comes down to it, life experiences and things in common, when some shit hits the fan, can she support him? Maybe. Does she have the daddy complex? You know, I like men that are older than me. I've dated men that were 10 plus my 
senior and I find that they tend to think that they're my daddy too. So again, those are things that you have to think about. What do y'all think? How do you feel about that 18 year gap? She is, he is old enough to be her dad. But again, what works for someone else may not work for you and I. My way I operate in a relationship may not work for how you operate in a relationship. You might like open marriage. Y'all might have a polyamorous relationship. Look up polyamorous, okay? I didn't talked about it once or twice before in my Truthful Thursdays. But I'm just saying, so what works for me may not work for you. And if it's working for them, great. But if in two years we see that they didn't separated and went their own way and he tried to get custody of the baby, <laughs> I don't be like, uh-huh, they didn't have shit in common. Which brings me right into my next little segment, the next celebrities that I talk about. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. Let me tell it. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And not because of YouTube. Inside my head, I am actually like popping. Like everybody wants to be my friend inside my head. That's the little world I live in. Call me crazy. Whatever. So, let's talk about the Puerto Rican princess and Stevie J. We have seen their relationship through the ups and downs. We've seen them flourish together and fall and hit ground zero together, honey. We have seen it all. And you know, the fact of the matter is they put it on reality TV and we know that some of it is scripted, but we also know a large part of it is really how their life operates. For example, the, the hot temper of Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess, is real, okay? The I'm better than you attitude that she carries is real. If you live in L.A., you've probably seen her at a party or two, and she gives the I'm the shit vibe. I mean, hell, every woman should feel like they the shit, but be humble. Sit down, bitch. Be humble. Mm. I really think that Jocelyn is a beautiful woman. I do. Y'all hear my neighbor tell him, trying to train their dog? Train their dog to shut the fuck up. The dog barks at 5 o'clock in the motherfucking morning. I digress. So, we know that Jocelyn is a little hot-tempered, and we know that Stevie J is with the business. He likes the ladies. He's a male thought, <laughs> better known as a hoe. This is going to sit every five seconds. So, um, y'all, forgive me. So, yeah, so, uh, Stevie J and Jocelyn Hernandez are now having a custody battle over beautiful Bonnie Bella. Yes, Bonnie the Beautiful. That is what Bella means in quite a few languages. Uh, and listen, it's gotten to the point where the Atlanta judge is like, hey, we know who you are. We've seen you on TV, even though it's answered and it's scripted. A lot of this is your real life. So I'm going to assign somebody to you from the court to look into your life. And not only are we looking at who's better fit as in financially, who has a stable environment, the environment that the child is going to be in. Not only are we going to look at that, but we're going to look at you your health, your medical history, your well-being, your social environment. We want to know who you are. You're going to be drug tested, honey. <laughs> yes, not only are you going to be drug tested, but you're going to go through a psych evaluation. And if you are unfit, it's going to come back to us and I am going to make a ruling based on what this court appointed person is going to to say what they're going to give the delivery the package the information about what they found honey baby let me tell you something neither one of them want that in their life i'm absolutely sure of it because both of them are batshit fucking crazy both of them were probably doing sugar booger together both of them now granted stevie j is supposed to have stopped and maybe jocelyn has stopped too but god dang it let me tell you something Truth be told, everything comes to the light. So you might as well live in your truth in the light, okay? Because what happens when the court-appointed person comes back and says, hey, neither of them are fit. 
Both of them are fucked up in the head. Neither of them can provide can provide a stable, healthy environment for a Bonnie Bella. Then what happens? Someone else gets your baby, your mama, your grandmama, your sister, your cousin, your friend, one of them. Or worst case scenario, she gets to become a ward of the state until you get your shit together. So here's my thing. How come we live in a day and age that at one point you and I, we loved each other. I mean, everything about you, I loved your attitude, the ground you walked on, the way you twerked, the way you smiled, the way you invited people into my relationship. I was with it. How come we can't be with co-parenting? How come we can't coexist as parents and find the best solution together for Bonnie Bella? Why is that? Why does it always have to turn into a neck rolling, bitch you ain't shit environment for our children? Why is that? I mean, I'm going to give both parents prop. You both want to be a part of their lives because guess what? There are deadbeat ass dads and there are deadbeat ass moms. I talk about them in a truthful Thursday. You can check it out right here. But they both want to be an active part of their lives. So why can't we come together and figure out a solution that works for the both of us instead of jeopardizing the fact that neither one of us may be fit to raise our child? Come on, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And I'm talking about people, too, in real life. How come you can't figure out how to coexist with the person that you loved or fucked and met, uh, had a baby with by accident? Whatever the case is, why can't you figure out a solution that works best for everybody, especially for the baby? How y'all feel about that? What do you think about Tyler, the creator, living in his truth? Don't you think he should just go on and ride it out, honey? Ride it out because people rally against, rally with you instead of against you when you live in your truth. And then the whole Robin and Amber thing, how you think Paula feeling at home? She probably like, good riddance, my nigga. Good luck, Amber. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do, but he yours. I don't know. I could give it to you, but what you gonna do with it? She gave it to you, you could have it, do what you want. Do what you like. Uh, I think I might be buzzed. And then lastly, Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican princess, and Stevie, AKA Stevie J. What do you think about their situation? You know, I was gonna talk about Kim K and Jeffrey Carr. I'm shit. Je Jeffrey Carr, who the fuck is Jeffrey Carr? Jeffrey Star, but you know what? I think enough people have addressed that and they can have at it. I don't want to make any of the Kim K people upset, honey. But then again, maybe, maybe I do. Is she racist? Isn't she racist? Listen, if you want to know all about that, I got the perfect person for you to go find and check them out. It is the plainest Jane, honey, and Sunday, she gives you nothing but syrup. Good, juicy, thick syrup comes out pouring slow, dripping with oil all the sweetness and the bitter of, of syrup that you can get. Go check out The Plaintiff Jane. I put her link here and here just for you. I think that's it. I think that wraps up my first edition of Celebrity. <laughs> Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I will see you on the next video.